Santa Cruz really has that artistic edge, but also one of great tolerance. Um, uh, it's, it's really impossible to stand out here. <laughs> it's not been this way just since the hippie days. If you go back into the late 1800s, this was a place that drew artists and writers and uh, bohemians uh, because something about it is uh, uh, conducive to the quirky. I, I, if I could put it into words, I'd say I've always been driven to uh, create, making things, drawing things, uh, and um, guitar making just brought it full and whole to me uh, from, from drawing on paper or, or just uh, fooling around making things to have something with real, real substance to it. Um, a guitar, you know, the cheapest guitar could change the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, you write a song that can change an international border or attract a, attract a mate for life. So that's a real powerful thing. And um, I just, uh, I think I got struck, like I said, with some reverence for uh, what it is and the potential. And it just fit. That's really what it was. It wasn't a struggle and an aspiration to make something out of guitar making. It was just guitar making fit. That yonder city, oh Lord, and it's not pretty unique. Um, we're really we're not a factory, we're not a single builder, um, and we're not a you know a small company building like uh, the big companies. And we really are custom shop. That's what we do. What happens when you walk in this room is we're in a controlled environment. Um, it's uh, the middle of the world in temperature and humidity because we make guitars that can go to Stockholm, Sweden in the winter where there's no moisture or Singapore anytime where it's super humid and uh, the guitar can shrink and swell probably about three-eighths of an inch and uh, no one has a sense of humor about a crack you know in their four thousand dollar guitar so by building in the center of that we have the broadest bandwidth of comfort as the guitar travels around and a stranger traveling through this wearisome land. What you'll see here, what we're really doing different is, as I explained, first and foremost, we make a fraction of the guitars that uh, large companies do. We make less guitars in a year than some companies make in a day. Every piece of wood is different. Um, uh, in a living tree, 10 pieces of wood the same size um, uh, would be different frequencies. When you tap on them, they make a different note. So when you assemble a guitar out of pre-sized pieces, it's like throwing rocks at a piano. You'd end up with uh, random notes and probably discordant. So lacking sustain, lacking colorful overtones. Um, so the tradition of Luthery, the old violin building, was making things to frequencies instead of dimensions. So you actually compose the instrument like you compose a chord on a piano. And obviously that's what we do or I wouldn't be bragging about it. Just can't keep still. I've seen a lot of places where I'd like to stay. When this is completed, this top will be a dimension, not to a size, but to a deflection and to a frequency. And I ride wherever the wind Here's a good illustration of a before and after. Um, we didn't pre-shape these, and I'll show you an after in a second, uh, because we want to manipulate these to do two things. One is to work with the graphic equalization. How much bass versus treble do we want in this guitar? Uh, that bluegrass guitar, we'd want a big bass, but for classical or jazz or, or modern finger style, we'd like to EQ much more even, bass, treble, and mid-range, and let the artist decide. So this top is like a chord on a musical instrument. Uh, when strings put into motion, it'll sustain, it'll develop overtones, it'll be a good one. I've been in rich men's houses, and I've been in jail, 
And when it's time for leaving, I just hit the trail. So Ezra is fitting a neck to this body, um, but it uh, uh, runs pretty deep here. Um, Ezra is also our master carver. He's the one that can accommodate someone's wish for uh, a custom spacing between the strings, um, uh, a length of string for, for custom tension, um, the shape of the neck. Uh, the decorative issues, there's a lot that can happen with the neck. And what he's doing right now is he's fitting this neck to the body, and uh, here's a real testament to, to humans. RCNC can cut these joints within a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. This is like rocket to the moon, uh, or motorcycle engine, or artificial heart tolerances. However, that would be in titanium. Uh, or, or steel. Um, uh, when it comes to wood, Ezra will get a better fit by feel uh, than, the, than the machines will by cutting automatically. So this neck to body fit is going to be done super accurately because not only is the fit important for sound, but the geometry is critical for, for sound. Uh, how optimally the top is moved, and, and second is playability. We want a narrow range of adjustability for different playing styles, but all in all, there's a place we want that, uh, the string angle to approach the body, and that's what Ezra will be doing here. I'm a human bird of passage, and the song I trill is once you get the habit, you just can't keep still. So really early in my career, I swore I was going to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And one of my strong messages is, you don't have to compromise. We can make the best stuff in the world using responsibly harvested wood. And there's a lot of ways to do that. When you feel the thrill, for once you get the This is uh, Coca Bolo, and we get this from storm blowdowns and dead standing trees. And we deal with a, a, a family that does this specifically to get the reclaimed stuff. Um, this is koa from Hawaii, and this is specifically from uh, down trees. Uh, this mahogany is a sustainable yield. It's grown like a Christmas tree farm. And it's, and it's like still a little bit secret because uh, it takes about 100 years for this to reach maturity. So who in the heck would have thought of sustainable yield 100 years ago? It was the British hiding military materials from the Germans before World War I. And na their navy was their military strength, and mahogany was a huge part of that, of the boat building. So uh, mahogany is a rainforest timber. Uh, it's, it's deforestation, it's cultural upheaval. It's really not a good thing to be bringing out of South America. Uh, even the stuff that, that is supposedly um, watched is suspect. So we're really proud to be part of this program. Holding up traffic. When day's work is over. I thought we were going along at a breakneck speed, but it turns yeah, out. <laughs> that's when you hear the night rider song. The key to happiness is making other people happy. And uh, you know Lloyd has a real knack for that. Uh, making people around him feel important. As human beings, we'd much rather have meaning and purpose than just about anything. I revere wood. Um, you know, I, I worship the creator of wood, but I revere wood. And uh, it, it, it's so profound to me, as you'll see where I'm taking you guys, is, um, you know, our context is, let's say, business or uh, that kind of thing. But what we'll see today will really give you um, a feeling of perspective of where you belong in the universe. And that's a pretty big promise, but you'll get what I'm talking about when you see these trees. My trusty little night horse, he's gentle and smart. He's heard my song so This much. one is like, how many trees are there? One, two, three, four, and maybe another one or two on the other side? They all come from one tree and then they grow up and sometimes they'll grow together. But you see that, that dent that goes around that first one? Yeah. What is that? It's like, it's like it would be called girdling. Something tight was, or something was around it as a tree grew, it constricted it. But um, that's pretty dang old. That beats Europeans. Gotta keep the herd settled 
don't want no stampede. The reason me and Lloyd are fast friends, even though we don't spend a lot of time together, is that um, uh, shared perspective. That you get more than you give is, is like uh, gravity. Our mission statement is peace of mind and quality of life. And if, and if that's the first filter that everything else comes through, we'll do pretty good. And that's not a selfish statement either, you know, because you, you truly uh, become happy by other people's happiness. And uh, that's uh, one of the immutable laws of nature, it's not my opinion. And uh, that's what makes the world go around. So uh, I realize that's very philosophical for people that might be interested, how do we run the company, you know, what's our business success and so forth, but it really all comes down to that. So, so our instruments go out and take on a life of their own. And of course it's satisfying when I can mention a name of a celebrity that everybody knows, but my real gratification comes from people that use the guitars in uh, teaching, charity, worship, and things like that, that truly change the world. And that we do our part in it, you know? We didn't cause it, um, uh, but we're able to be part of the process. And that's very satisfying. No more to be heard Sleep, doggy, sleep.